Good evening, this is News Flash with Rosemary Zembi. Bwana Rigiji, sasa hizi unajua vizuri baba anaenda AU. Anaenda kuwa AU chairperson. Na baba akienda anawacha babu. Mheshimiwa Nairobi wa Rais, mimi siwezi jiita rafiki yako, ukweli tu. Sisi sio marafiki hata leo ndio mara ya kwanza tumepatana hapa. Lakini nataka kukuambia mimi sinanga ubaya na wewe. Hakuna kitu chochote ambacho kinaleta uhasa. Deputy President Rigathi Gashagwa and leaders from the Azimia coalition attended a burial ceremony for the late Major Dong's father in Nyeri County today. Senator Edwin Sifuna faced the Deputy President for the first time since last year's general elections, making a notable event. Kwa hivyo mheshimiwa naibu wa rais ile mambo ambayo ilikuwa inatuletea tofauti mimi naona ni kama inaenda ikipungua Alongside Mbakasi constituencies Babu Owino Senator Sifuna openly addressed their frustrations to Deputy President Rigathi Gashagwa and the Nairobi Governor Johnson Sakaja regarding the country's current trajectory Bwana Rigiji Mjichunge sana hapo 2027 tunakujia hizo viti kwa sababu kama tutaona ushuru inaongezwa juu zaidi mimi mwenyewe nitaleta maandamano hapa Nyeri jambo la mwisho kwa gavana wangu wa Nairobi mheshimiwa Sakaja mimi nataka ni kuombe kwa sababu mimi nakujua kama muungwana wale ndugu zetu ambao wanatufanyia huduma ya afya kule Nairobi madaktari wetu hakuna haja ya kuanza kutisha watu hakuna haja ya kuanza kupiga watu kama secretary general wa KMPDU tier gas unajua hiyo watu hawajazoea hiyo vitu wao ni madaktari wamekaa kwa shule miaka sita wao wanakuja kusaidia tu wananchi ita hao watu mketi mzuluishe ile mambo ambayo iko pale badala ya kutoa vitisho ya kusema oh sijui msiporudi kazi mtafanya namna gani This exchange likely involved discussions on governance and policies highlighting the importance of dialogue between different political factions Chief Justice Martha Kome has vigorously defended the judiciary's position on the new housing levy law asserting that the judiciary was not involved in any agreements regarding the implementation of the program. The statement comes in response to recent remarks by President William Ruto suggesting an agreement between the executive and the judiciary on the housing levy program. Tumekubaliana na mahakama tuwe na sheria ambayo itapanga mambo ya housing. Speaking in Naivasha on Thursday, CJ Kome emphasized the independence of the judiciary, its obligation to fulfill its legal duties concerning the housing issue. She clarified that the judiciary was not a party to any agreements, especially in matters before the court, and highlighted the judiciary's role in suspending the implementation of the levy through a court case. The judiciary is not in any capacity able to enter into any agreement with the executive, especially in a matter that is before court. The judiciary was not a party in that uh, course. She also indicated that the president's remark might have been taken out of context or misrepresented, suggesting that his acknowledgement of an agreement with the judiciary referred to compliance with court directives rather than a direct agreement. What I could say or deduce from that conversation is that it was taken out of context or there was misinterpretation because what His Excellency was saying is that he agreed with the judgment of the court. The Kenya Revenue Authority KRA has announced that as of March 19, 2024, deductions of the government's affordable housing project would begin. Employers are required to deduct 1.5% from the employees' gross salaries and contribute a corresponding 1.5% for each employee. Additionally, all individuals earning income in Kenya will remit 1.5% of their gross income to KRA as a housing levy. Payment of the levy is due by the ninth working day after the month end. Employers can make levy payments at KRA agents banks or via mobile money using the e-citizen pay bill number 222222 or USSD code star 222 hash. Failure to comply with this law will result in penalties amounting to a 3% fine on the unpaid funds per month. 
President William Ruto signed a controversial affordable housing bill into law on Tuesday, facilitating the reinstatement of housing levy deductions. Elsewhere, Interior Cabinet Secretary Professor Kithure Kindiki has suggested that high-ranking government officials might soon face limitations on sharing specific information or utilizing the popular Chinese app TikTok on government devices. This proposal is currently being discussed by the National Security Council due to concerns regarding the security risks associated with the social media platforms. During his appearance before the Public Petitions Committee of the National Assembly, Kindiki underscored the increasing significance of addressing cybersecurity threats, noting that social media poses a considerable risk to the country. He mentioned the potential establishment of an additional layer of defense forces dedicated to safeguarding against cyber threats. Kindiki emphasized the evolving nature of security challenges, stating that cyberspace has become a crucial domain of risk. He proposed the creation of, of a fourth defense tier, which would involve investing in internal security and defense arrangements to effectively secure cyberspace. He also emphasized the importance of leveraging both military and internal security expertise alongside technological capabilities to bolster cybersecurity measures. In summary, the government is considering measures to restrict the use of certain social media platforms among senior officials and exploring the establishment of dedicated cybersecurity defense forces to mitigate the growing threats in cyberspace. That's all we had for you tonight. And reporting for Elja Africa, this has been Rosemary Zembi. Have a good night.